Hello, 143 viewers. I'm Katherine Harvey, and this is Food 143. What's better than Cohasset in the summer? Ask most Cohasset residents, and they'll say nothing is better, except maybe the foods we love prepared and enjoyed at some of our favorite spots around town. I've been here 15 years, and I still haven't covered it all. So I'm going out and about around town to find out all the things Cohasset residents love about food what we like to eat, where we like to eat it, and how we like it prepared. So come along. Now viewers, if you're anything like me, you've driven by and watched by countless times and wondered about the history of this magnificent building. In 1704, it began its life as a simple farmhouse. It was the home of Thomas James, who was one of the original land grantees in this area back when it was still part of Hingham. His son, Philip, when he inherited the property, is the one who turned it into an inn, and then his grandson, Christopher, expanded the building and turned it into what we know today as the Red Lion Inn. In its intervening years, it's been known by at least three other names, the Norfolk House, the Hillside Inn, and the Cohasset Inn. But in the 1940s, Cohasset welcomed back the Red Lion Inn. Most recently, the inn has been taken over by Cohasset Hospitality Partners, and I'm very happy to report that we've been invited inside to sample and see what they're doing with the place. Let's go chat with the chef and general manager and find out what's happening and what's new at the Red Lion Inn. Four, three viewers, welcome to the Red Lion. We're here today with the chef, Rich Eads, and the general manager, Paul Sylvia, and we're gonna talk about some of the many changes that have taken place recently here at the Red Lion. So, Paul, all of our Food 143 viewers are familiar with the Red Lion as this sort of gem of property here in the middle of Classic Village. Um, and it has undergone some changes in ownership and changes in management over the last few years. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's happening now? Uh, sure. I am, uh, have just taken over as the general manager about three, four months ago. Um, really working towards building up the staff um, and getting things uh, the front of the house where it needs to be. Um, since we're very happy with uh, what the chef's been doing uh, with the food. Um, so since we've gotten into the cold weather, we've been running our fireplaces, uh, keeping it nice and cozy in here. Um, and uh, that's about, uh, about, about what, we've, what we've got so it's far. It's very cozy here in the tavern on mm -hmm. a cold day. Great for watching a game or taking in um, a lovely dinner in the evenings. Absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, the service that you're doing these days. Um, protocols, opens, closes, you know, what, what, what are your hours like these days? Sure, so um, we uh, do have staffing issues like everybody these days. Uh, so we are open Wednesday to Sunday and we are open from 5 to 10 and we have the kitchen closed an hour earlier. Uh, the bar remains open for an hour um, after the kitchen. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, some new menu items. Um, now, remind me, Rich, you came in as a chef, was it this summer? Yeah, I've been here for about a year and a half running some of the other properties, but um, we reopened the Red Lion in April, so. Great, so just to refresh everybody's um, memory, the uh, Red Lion is now owned by Cohasset Hospitality Partners, which is also, um, has the Old Salt House and Atlantica. Um, and in its portfolio, is that, do I have all that? Yeah, Atlantic is no longer, but that's okay. That's right, it's yeah. changing, yeah. yes. Changing. We still have Salt House and obviously events here and there. Mm -hmm. Great, great. So, um, what, 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 give me a sort of um, general idea behind the new menu. I mean, the biggest thing for me, um, when I started with this company, this building was closed because of COVID. So I really had no history of what used to happen here. Uh, so it was kind of nice to have a blank slate and just kind of like be in the town for a little bit uh, before we open to kind of 
get feedback from guests, like especially at Salt House, about things that people wanted mm -hmm. or were missed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the biggest thing for me, menu-wise, when we opened here, was to try to keep the menu um, accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, somewhere that people can come two or three times a week, kind of make this like their home away from home. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try to cover as many bases as possible, uh, so people can come in and have a, a great burger, or they can come in and really you know, blow it out and have whatever they want. Um, we do everything in house. Um, something I've been doing for a very long time. So just, it's just kind of taking like my food philosophies from other restaurants I've run, mm -hmm. uh, bring them here, but then also try to make it so that you know people want to be here. So some tavern classics and a few touches of fine dining as well. Yeah. And you have some background in fine dining, from what I understand. I do. Yeah. Um, I spent about 15 years in the city. Uh, worked for Barbara Lynch for about seven years. Um, kind of learned here at Clio way back when. Oh wow. Uh, so. I've been around, for sure. But Fantastic. it's nice to be here. Uh, it's kind of cool to see like a range like this and a kitchen like this in the middle of Cohasset was kind of a selling point for me. Yes, and, uh, I'd love to come in and and, uh, and have a little bit of a tour yeah, of the range. Um, I know it's an historic piece. It is. Yeah. Um, sort of a, a you know a um, centerpiece of the of this historic building. Yeah. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're featuring on the menu at the moment? Um, well, right now it's in the you know, fall winter, so we, uh, we have a new duck dish on the menu that people enjoy. Uh, we sell a lot of them. It's a lasagnette, so it's kind of a, it was kind of a way to get like, people always want duck, you know, but you know, with COVID and pricing and stuff like that, it's kind of hard to push an entree out that people want to afford mm -hmm. or like want to come back for. Mm -hmm. uh, so we ended up doing a, a braised duck dish and then kind of tying in some of uh, the things that are that I like to do, like making fresh pasta and stuff like that. So we uh, we make like an individual lasagna, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sounds so fancy. So braised duck, a little Parmesan cream sauce, and then fresh truffles. Mm, delicious. It is fancy, but it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrific. Um, so turning back to the building, um, Paul, it's there's so much history, and mm -hmm. um, it, uh, most almost all of that feeling of, of history and, and most of the physical plant really has been kept intact. Yeah, um, the building's been here since 1704. You know, there's been changes since then, of course, but we try and keep the, the rustic charm of the building um, intact. And there's lots of reminders, little um, things with the lions in 1704 to remind people of the rich history that's here in the building. Mm -hmm. and five fireplaces if I'm not mistaken? Five fireplaces, yeah. We have one in the pub, uh, two in the main dining room, one and two others in the private dining room areas that we also use for service as well. Right, so tell me about the private dining room. So those mm -hmm. are available for private events, yep. small events, mm -hmm. but also sometimes used for regular dinner service. Right. Um, they can be booked uh, ahead of time. We do a limited menu. We set up a completely custom menu based on our regular menu um, and uh, people have their own little space doors can close um, in the winter garden room we can do up to 24 people in the yellow room we can do uh, about 16 um, so you kind of have your own space and with everything going on with the pandemic and everything it's kind of nice to just have your own family or friends um, in a space um, when we don't have it booked we do use it for uh, the general public as well. Terrific. Mm -hmm. And the wedding business still gangbusters. Absolutely. Yeah, we have two big um, event venues uh, in the back of the property, the Hillside House and the barn mm -hmm. that uh, both get used for weddings and other events as well. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I think is really interesting about the Red Lion is that it's a uh, really um, an attraction in any season because you have this sort of the warmth and the cozy feel of this rustic tavern but you also have beautiful outdoor spaces as well so really can suit any season yeah, absolutely yeah. yeah we have a deck and uh, a patio that we're working on um, building up a little bit more to be a little bit nicer so we're hoping that the next season as well uh, we continue to bring people here to the red line Fantastic. <clears throat> so, Paul, I don't think we really need to tell our Food 143 viewers how challenging it has been to run a restaurant in the pandemic. Uh, but you're sort of in a special 
set of circumstances here because you're essentially trying to start a new restaurant in what is a very familiar property um, in a small town environment, a very sort of uh, staid restaurant scene, and and also in the middle of a pandemic. So, so what has that been like for you? Uh, it's definitely been a challenge. Um, we've been fortunate to hire a lot of great staff. Um, we also have the old salt house that we run. I hired some people over there during the um, late summer into the fall and then brought them over here to to work as we got busier here um, so it's definitely having to use everybody that you have at your disposal and building people up um, regardless of their previous experience mm -hmm. and also sort of letting the community know that in this beautiful cornerstone of town you essentially have a new business absolutely and um, it's been easier for me as a manager with Chef Rich having some great food that he makes. Um, and part of it is just letting the community know um, we have some really great food here and we're working towards um, building up the bar offerings as well as the service here. Mm -hmm. And so we talked uh, a little bit about um, the, the menu is really sort of an approach, still the approachable tavern-like menu but really delivered in an exceptional way and borrowing on some of your experiences working in fine dining in Boston. Um, and so, again, it's, you know, uh, supply has been difficult, Absolutely. pricing is difficult, and so in trying to sort of elevate some of those aspects of your, of your menu, what, how has that been? Uh, so it's been tricky, uh, for sure. I think the, the biggest thing for me in the, the coming months or seasons is really to try to get more of the community involved in the restaurant and by that I mean you know uh, local farms some local businesses um, that stuff's been really hard in the pandemic just to try to get out even for me to get out and like eat people mm -hmm. um, you know it's tough uh, but no less go places where those all those businesses just aren't doing what they used to uh, so like, all, all of our supply chains are a little rough yeah so and also if you can collaborate with local business yeah. and sort of deliver you know yeah, I mean, maybe it's all about pivot. Su support for sure yeah and for us because we we have this business here but if we can support some small farms and things like that i mean i'd rather be getting produce especially from places closer to home mm -hmm. um you know especially now yeah and so getting back to the uh, the bar offerings and mm -hmm. um again delivering sort of some some exceptional items in that same sort of cozy tavern feel sure uh yeah we just switched over to more of a craft cocktail uh signature drink menu um, we're batching cocktails uh to make the times that it takes to to make these drinks a lot less uh, and we're really trying to elevate uh, we're really trying to elevate the feel of the the drinks in a tavern setting fantastic so, Paul, one of the things that our viewers may not know about this historic property is that in the kitchen, there is a very special range. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And then we'll go take a look. Uh, really, I think that's more uh, Chef Rich's <laughs> yeah. uh, expertise. Uh, uh, so this range has been here for, I think, 20 plus years. Um, it was custom made in France by a company called Bonnet. Uh, it's one of the largest of this style of chef suites in the U.S. Um, and it, you know it all still works and it's great. It's all right. Fun. One of my uh, friends came in and saw saw it the other day and he said it's like kind of like you're working in Ratatouille. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was pretty funny because uh, then I went and watched the movie with my daughter and I was like, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, great. All right. Well, let's go take a look. Yeah. Let's have a tour. Tell me about this stunning range that we're looking at. So this is the, the Bonnet from France. Um, it's so been here for? 20 plus years. I think it came in like the late 90s. I'm not quite sure. There's, I found a book about it somewhere in the hotel. So, and this is not sort of what you typically find in a kitchen. This is... No, definitely not. There's only a few of these um, around. But, um, but I love them. Uh, so we run like three stations off of here. We have our salad station in the back. Uh, a meat station and a fish station, and all the food gets plated at the pass. So you kind of 
for me, it's great because I literally get to touch every dish that leaves the kitchen. And you're so you're here, and you've got your other, you've got staff all around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up there, but yeah, uh, all my staff is here. All the food comes off this line, and uh, and you're doing the executing up here at the counter. Fantastic. So you've got like eight stations around here. Yeah, it's kind of more like. Yeah, for the yeah. cooktops and this you've is, got the grills. This, yeah, they kind of share this stuff. Um, obviously, the grill for the meats, we use the plancha for some of our fish. Um, and then this is basically like what you would think is a saute range, it's called a fresh top. Um, so, what's great about this is this has a really central heat source, it's very hot. Um, <laughs> when it's on, it burns about a thousand degrees in the center, and then the heat radiates out. And, uh, so, you can basically cook on any surface, wherever you are. Um, it's like, super advantageous because like, if you have an open burner range with like six burners, you can only put six things on it, or you're doing the things where you're really trying to stack pots on top of each other and stuff like that. So it's much more efficient, um, and it's actually kind of cool. These small pots, you can boil water in about 20 seconds. Wow. And so tell me about what's going on under here. Are these ovens, these just or is this just a fuel source? No, these or? are ovens. These are just our deck ovens. Um, same kind of thing, though. <laughs> um, but they're all cast iron, which is pretty rare for uh, for an oven. So that everything in here is cast. Like this is all cast iron. These are cast iron. These doors will actually support like a couple hundred pounds. You can stand on them. Wow. Pretty cool. Indestructible. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, this thing is almost 30 years old. And it's still it's still big. And it, now, was this manufactured for this kitchen? Uh, my understanding is, yeah, it was custom made. Wow. In France, and then brought here. I'm sure they took the wall out. It's one solid piece. So it came okay. in in one piece. And this beautiful brass rail. Oh yeah. That that must be a whole part of your cleaning protocol, it is, yeah. keeping it nice and shiny. Lots of polishing right there. Yeah. <laughs> stunning. Absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. So Reed, you are the bar manager here at the Red Lion, and I understand that you have been rolling out a whole new craft cocktail menu. Why don't you tell me about it? Yes, we have been very excited to roll out our new menu. We've actually been working on it for worked on it for a couple of months just to get a real good um, feel for the tastes of the drinks and you know a couple of different flavor profiles so that we have something that hopefully everyone will enjoy. Um, I'm seeing a lot of seasonal changes and oh yeah. some you know warm and cozy cocktails as well as some sort of light and refreshing as the seasons have changed. Tell me what what are some of your favorites? So my personal favorite is our cold brew espresso martini. Um, I'm a big fan of coffee, and honestly, this drink is just to die for. Um, we use like real Italian espresso liqueur that has been uh, infused with real Italian espresso beans, uh, together with some choice vodkas and other coffee liqueurs to make an excellent creamy um, black espresso martini. Just great mouthfeel, great taste. Um, otherwise, I think maybe the smoked old fashions. It's one of our house mm. specialties. We uh, smoke a cedar plank and then capture the smoke in the glass, and then we put the old fashioned in there. It just has such an amazing smell to it, along with the taste. Sounds delicious for a chilly evening. Oh yes. Perfect. Sit well, by the fireplace. You'll be seeing me soon. Well, thank you very much. Thanks so much. three viewers thanks so much for joining us again on this chilly day it's a perfect kind of day to stop in at the red lion for a cozy meal fireside like countless weary travelers in the many years before viewers if there's something that you would like to see us feature please reach out to us on facebook at 143 tv thanks so much I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, 
and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America.